episode, we'll talk about latest decision by the center on giving thrust to mother tongue or to say regional language in technical education, especially in engineering courses from the next academic year. A few IITs and NITs are being shortlisted for the same. The decision to teach in regional language was taken at a high level meeting chaired by Union Minister for Education, Mr. Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank, last month. Well, in the decision announced, the ministry said that this move is in line with new education policy or the NEP 2020, which promotes regional language as a mode of delivering education. So what exactly is this move? To discuss further on this, we are joined with three extremely eminent personalities from the field of education. Professor Pramod Kumar Jain, Director IIT BHU. Well, many thanks for joining us. Professor M. Jagdish Kumar, Vice Chancellor, Jawaharlal Nehru University. Many thanks for joining us, sir. And Dr. Shiv Govind Singh, Professor, Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Hyderabad. Well, extremely thank you for three of us for joining us, sir. Let me start with you, Mr. Jagdish Kumar. Uh, sir, well, the government says this move is with line with new education policy. Now, how do you see this move of having technical education or to say the technical uh, syllabus being taught in mother tongue? Few IITs and NITs are already being selected for this, sir. First words from you. Right. You know, let me set the context uh, first. There is no doubt that uh, English has become a preferable uh, language for scientific communication in the international context. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, whatever discussion that we do, it should be based on evidence. It should be based on research data. And you should right. not be driven by emotions or any other reasons. Having said that, the discussion on English medium instruction or mm -hmm. EMI is not a new discussion. It has been there for several decades, for last four or five decades. And especially the English medium instruction has become you know, a major issue uh, in countries which are part of the global south. You know, uh, for example, large part of Asia, Central America, uh, uh, South America, Africa, and Middle East, barring, of course, Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, the point is that uh, there is growing research evidence which shows that if the students are taught in their mother tongue or the regional language, their ability to understand the concepts is much better. Okay. And you know, let me let me give you one example before mm -hmm. I come to the IITs or our own uh, institutes. Right. A, a very recent study which was carried out in Hong Kong, it has very clearly shown that learning physics concepts in home language mm -hmm. led to a, a very advanced level of conceptual understanding. Okay. And in South Africa, recently a study was conducted and the data has very clearly shown that if the students are taught the science concepts or engineering concepts in their own mother tongue, they have become more confident about expressing their ideas about science okay. or engineering. And if, if you uh, come to even smaller countries like uh, Lebanon, where students have give, uh, expressed a very clear uh, you know, preference for being taught in their mother tongue rather than in English. Now, um, there is a growing evidence which shows that people become more creative. Students will become more creative and innovative if they are taught in their own mother tongue. Therefore, uh, what the national education policy has suggested and also the recent decision uh, uh, taken by the government to introduce the regional language or the mother tongue in the engineering education, I think it, it was long due and I'm okay. very glad that uh, these steps are now taken in our higher education. Well, well before I open up discussions sir, uh, to two other panelists, let me ask you this question in conjunction to, to what you uh, elucidated about other countries and their stress on learning on uh, uh, their own vernaculars and their own mother tongues. So have you also considered any research of that kind, especially in India and vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the technical institute that we are opened up for, for imparting education or technical education in mother tongue? 
See, uh, having taught in IIT system for several decades, I have found myself that when we communicate in mixed language, for example, Hindi and English in the classroom, especially those students who come from rural backgrounds, they mm -hmm. feel very, very comfortable, okay. right? Uh, that is one. The other issue is that, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in every IIT at the end of first or second semester, um, we found that a large number of students, you know, anywhere close to 100 or 150 in IIT Delhi, for example, a uh, few years ago, they, they, they fail in basic subjects such as maths, physics, and chemistry. Now, why does this happen? It is not mm. because they are any uh, less creative. It is because they come from rural backgrounds. They might have studied in their own mother tongue. And when okay. they come to IIT, they have to grasp not only the conceptual understanding of the subject, but also they have to master uh, the English language. So that is where the problem comes. And I'm sure, uh, especially for those students who come from the rural and village backgrounds, right. studying in their own mother tongue will enhance uh, their confidence to do well. So uh, right. therefore, right. I, I definitely feel that we should start with the mixed mode of teaching or offer the option of studying in their regional language uh, in the higher educational institutes if we want to make our students more creative and innovative. Right, right, right. Well, many thanks for uh, the opening remarks, uh, Professor Jagdish Kumar. Let me come to you, uh, Professor uh, Shiv Govind uh, uh, Singhji. Now, sir, uh, uh, let me understand here. Uh, will this move by the government, is it, is it only uh, to cater towards a regional population or is there the stress on mother tongue as that has also been emphasized uh, by no less than the chairperson of Raj Sabha and uh, Honorable Vice President of India. So is it a larger picture to promote Indian languages in the curriculum as well? I agree. Uh, the intent may be to uh, encourage all the wonderful language. Uh, as, as Professor Jagdish Kumar rightly pointed out, some of the research has been done which actually help to understand the uh, in, even in science, I, I can tell you my personal example. So when I understand some subject, I used to say to my parents, if I understand in, in I can understand and able to explain it in Hindi, then I say, aha, I understand it. If I'm not able to understand it, then I used to explain in English. So whenever I understand anything, I able to explain in my own language. So that that is very important to be creative. You need to be in your own uh, language. Unfortunately, the thing which hinders all of us is mm. that we don't have the resources, especially right. in a technical education. Mm. So, yeah, so right. there is a right. strong need to build up the resources to, to encourage this kind of uh, uh, learning. Right. Otherwise, right. there will be always a lag. Right, right. Uh, let me come to you, uh, Professor Pramod Kumarjan. Sorry for keep you waiting here. So, let me just uh, start from the point here. Uh, so, having taught the syllabus, especially the technical education in, uh, in, the, in, in local language, in, the, in vernacular mother tongue, as we say, uh, will, what, what, are you seeing some challenges? Like, do you have to train not just the students here, but also the faculty members uh, so that they are slick in the, in the regional language or the mother tongue, as to say, of in the particular institute? Uh, if I take forward the point put forward by Professor Jagdish Kumar and Professor Singh, right, uh, I think uh, faculty members may take up this challenge. Mm -hmm. Particularly if I look at the, let us say, first year students or second year students in most of the IITs or NITs, mm -hmm. you know, many of them do come from the rural background mm -hmm. and many component of the teaching. For example, say the laboratory component and sometimes the tutorial classes are also held in sometime Hindi or sometime like that. Purpose of doing that is to make that student do understand the concepts and think like that. Plus, the laboratory staff in most of the technical institutions are the local people, and they may not be able to communicate in English with the students. Right. So that component is already happening in Hindi. Okay. And I think uh, our purpose when we talk about teaching in bilingual or in mother tongue should be to make sure that students do understand the basic concepts of the subject. Mm -hmm. Plus, side by side, they should be able to express themselves. 
in the examination as well as in other you know places right. what happens sometime if a student to come from the rural background and we teach him or her purely in english then at the end of the semester or at the end of the year sometime i said by professor jagdish kumar they are not able to you know pass in the subjects though they are not poor in that subject but they are mm. not able to express themselves right and another important right. thing particularly at the first year level i would like to mention here in most of the iits and nits there is a provision of branch change after first year <laughs> and if these students are not able to express themselves if they are not able to score well then they are deprived of that option but you can say because they do not perform well and they are not able to you know get good marks and they are not able to change their branches so my thing is that we should try this option and sometime i think it should be a, in a friendly manner sometime teachers may have to adopt such kind of teaching method methodologies where they can teach them in english or hindi or in bilingual or whatever language they adopt so objective right. should be to ensure that they understand the things and they express all the concepts they have learned properly in the examination and at other places right 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 uh, uh professor jagdish kumar let me uh, just take this discussion next level, level forward uh so like so far we have discussed about i know it's it's a it's a massive fairly vast debate about like uh, how mother tongue could be used effectively in training students and especially in technical education now let let let's jump 3 or 4 or 5 years ahead once students complete their their the, the courses especially engineering courses or or other technical courses uh will stress perhaps only on mother tongue uh would it have any hindrance when they go out in industry and uh, well so far the industry standards has been fairly english to say off uh, so uh, will that be any hindrance for them for for students sir it's just a let hypothesis me, just a hypothesis right um, let me put a couple of points uh, before you take uh, for example tamil nadu tamil nadu Uh, the auto industry is very very well advanced it's a highly industrialized uh, uh, state now the state universities in tamil nadu if mm -hmm. they offer their engineering program in tamil that should be absolutely fine because the engineers who come out of these engineering colleges mm -hmm. they can then be employed in the auto industry in tamil nadu and then they can interact very well with the floor level workers who speak only tamil so right. the first, the first thing that we can do um, is we can encourage the state universities to introduce the engineering programs in their local language you know mm -hmm. almost uh, every uh, district is going to have a university uh, sometime or the late, uh, or later now only the students who are within that uh, uh, district will come and study in that university therefore there is a strong point to make the medium of instruction in that local language now having said that we are not against english this is something that people are misunderstanding and miscommunicating english of course is required as a tool of communication uh, mm -hmm. at the uh, at different contexts so therefore these students will also study english as a tool uh, to communicate right. so there is right. a major difference between using english as a tool to communicate using english as a medium of instruction all that we are saying is that the let the medium of instruction be in the local language and at the same time the students have to become proficient in using english as a medium of communication so if you do that uh, a student who is educated in say nagaland or a student who is educated in um, gujarat or uh, somewhere in in kerala they are ready to work in any multinational company either in india or across mm -hmm. the globe so i absolutely don't see any problem as long as we make our students more creative by educating them in their mother tongue and then making them learn english as a tool to communicate equipping them to communicate with the people uh, beyond their own local place i think this will enable the students uh, uh, to uh, become uh, you know uh, agents of social transformation not just only in our country but anywhere on the globe right 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 well uh, uh, let me come to you professor shiv govind singh uh, 
as you you in your answer you mentioned about the creativity and how uh, the uh, lessons or or education in in mother tongue will enhance creative latitude of students now do you see this move currently it's just confined to two institutions just few iits and nits uh, from the next academic year uh, so professor shiv govind singh do you do you see this the scope of this move expanding further and perhaps in some other courses as well or or will it or at the outset do you see it's only the technical education that requires to be taught in mother tongue i i, I don't believe that only technical uh, education should be in mother tongue it should be uh, all other things should be in their mother tongue so uh, but only thing can you provide the resources so uh, mm -hmm. I, to start with the few institute i i i think this is a right approach because right. we need to understand what is what is what is lacuna before going to the achieve the larger goal once you understand each and each problem and step by step then it's a good idea to go further level with the enhancement of of those those resources improvement as 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 uh, rightly mentioned by the both of the eminent professor that mm -hmm. end of the day english is important because the nagaland people may not be having the all the technical uh, requirement completed there they have to work in the, come to tamil nadu right so language of science is same right language of science mm -hmm. is not different only language of communication is different so english right, right. can be or Absolutely hindi right. can be yeah. or some other thing can be language of communication but science is same so as mm -hmm. far as understanding of science is concerned if you understand your language it is very easy to communicate in any other language that 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 is my my stand on this right 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 uh, uh professor jain uh, i'll just uh, my, my question to you is very similar like as uh, uh, we were talking about the scope of this move. So, do you see it confined to only technical education right now? And if we expand further, so what are the possible challenges for for expanding this move of government of imparting uh, education or higher education in mother tongue or vernacular? Yeah. So, I I can see uh, uh, immediate two three uh, problems. No, sir. So well, I'm sorry. Other... Uh, I beg your pardon. I'm, I'm, uh, my question was to uh, Professor Pram Pramod Kumar Jain. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Yeah. So if you have to start, you know, uh, technical education in bilingual or in mother language, yes, there are few challenges, of course, which we have to basically face and we have to convert them to the opportunities as well. One of them is to develop the academic material. Okay. Particularly sometimes the books, right. sometimes the right. uh, lecture contents, or something like that because you know that our uh, faculty members are teaching in english for so long so sometime it may be a bit of challenge to them to translate and to convert that into the mother tongue or something mm -hmm. or hindi language whatever you say so that would be one of the challenge but i think if you give this as an offer to the faculty members mm -hmm. many of the faculty members would really accept this challenge okay. And okay. they will come out, you know, out of their English mindset or something, and they would be ready. In fact, we have done a kind of informal discussion in our institution, and I am happy to share here with that many of the faculty members are ready to take up this challenge. That is one. Second, I think is you know, teaching is one part, of course. Second is the jobs as. Hmm. Uh, uh, Professor Jagdish Kumar already, you know, said about the job opportunities and things like that. Yes, yes. Another component that sometimes may pinch the faculty members is the research component. Because, you know, faculty members are supposed to research and consultancy and things like that also. So, if there are, you know, sufficient avenues for them to publish their research output in mother tongue or in Hindi or in any other regional language, you know, that will add further, you know, incentives to them. For example, say, take the case of Japan or any other country. They do have their many reputed journals and the conference proceedings where the papers are published only in Japanese. Right, right, right. They are teaching in Japanese, plus they are publishing their research output in the Japanese, and the companies are also, you know, preferring people, you know, with Japanese proficiency and things like that. Right. right. Companies look for the talent, basically. Language gives them the expression power, but otherwise, if you are talented, you can find a good job in any of the good company. 
Right, 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 right. Uh, Dr. Shiv Kovind, uh, yeah, sorry, sir. I mean, uh, you, you, were, you were saying you're adding a couple of points to the query. Please, please go ahead, please. Okay, so actually, uh, both the point is actually added by Professor Jain already. So, <laughs> no, you can still add a couple so, of points, sir. Yeah, so like I, I, I can say one, two, three things here because faculty is something which I feel, for example, it is easy for somebody from North India and they, are, they can teach in, in, in Hindi. But I am I'm in Hyderabad, right? And mm -hmm. here, Vernakar language is Telugu. So right. I, I, I know only few words in Telugu right now. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so it's not easy for me to teach it. So uh, being IIT, being a pan-India you know, uh, attraction. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure that the biggest hurdle I can see is the like faculty to use the vernacular language to teach it. So um, book can be done. For example, Professor Jagdish Kumar is a fantastic uh, professor in device physics. He can probably spend some time, then he can write a book in device speaking in Hindi or in Telugu. I think sir is from, a, from the, our, this land. So he can write a book in that. Writing a book is possible, probably, with the effort. Of course, it's not going to be done so easy. It's like it got a lot of effort. But like take teaching, is, is, I think, is going to be the Herculean task to convert a, a real, in reality. All this idea can be more right. difficult, probably, the teaching than the anything else. And right, right, so right. So that, 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 that is my, my point, yeah. Right, right. Well, Professor uh, Jagdish Kumar, as we wrap up the show, I want to have a last word from you, sir. Uh, since you are okay. the senior most in the panel here. <laughs> uh, sir, uh, again, like as we say, like uh, all these, uh, the, the two younger professors, they, were, they mentioned and they talked about uh, the challenges. Now, as a vice chancellor of a university, and hypothetically, if you think that we expand the scope of this move, to other non-technical courses as well. Now, how will you take this forward uh, as a head of an institution, sir, given the challenges along with it? Right. Uh, two points. Well, uh, at JNU, we have already formed an EPICS committee to look mm -hmm. at the possibility of uh, starting some of the programs uh, uh, in, 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 in the local language, right? So, which so means we are Hindi already, or, or, uh, like, or you'll have other North Indian languages? Okay. okay. Uh, right. Well, to begin with Hindi, to begin right. with Hindi. But... Uh, looking at the challenges, um, especially in national institutes where uh, uh, students will come from across India, you know, in 1925, writing in Young India, Mahatma Gandhi said, you know, by teaching our students uh, in a language which is totally foreign to them, we are making our kids 